All right, chat, YouTube, we have got some ranked replays to go over today, and it is versus somebody you might know, a couple of EU guys. Apparently, Jack, ever heard of him? The number one rated player, not only in EU, but in all of the world. He has held the number one spot for a long time recently, and I think, personally, a lot of it has to do with he started doing YouTube. He's always been one of the top guys, right? One of the top five guys, uh, maybe even top three, you could argue, in the world. But recently, he started farming the 1v1 content on the YouTube. He's been grinding content creation a lot. And so what that means is he's grinding a lot of games. Now, I didn't check, but I'm willing to bet that apparently Jack has more ones games than the other guys around him. Maybe even double, maybe even triple the amount of ones games. These guys actually don't play a lot of ones games to get to the top. It doesn't take them very long. They win basically all of them, and they get to the top, and then they chill out. But I have a feeling apparently Jack actually plays a lot more than everybody else. That being said, he also actually plays against this other guy on the other side of the field, Ayub. Ayub, we've actually, um, is a friend of the stream, is that something you can say? He's been watching, I think, uh, in the past before. He's in the Discord, and he actually is one of the more active players in our Discord. You can put exclamation point Discord in the chat if you um, want to go hang out with Ayub yourself. He is from Morocco. Uh, he's from Morocco, but he lives in Belgium, so I think he plays on all EU servers, so we're considering him an EU player here. Not that Morocco is an EU, but I, I guess you get what I'm saying. He is from uh, he is from EU, and I think he's ranked 6 EU right now, about 12 or something in the world. And so we're going to watch some ranked replays. These are four games against uh, Ayub and apparently Jack. And I think Ayub switched to an alt. I don't know if he has two accounts in the top 100, but I think after this first one between the two of them, he uh, jumps over to an alt, and then the last three are of him on an alt, but I, I could tell it was him. I, I checked out the Steam account. He, he plays with his regular name sometimes. So I don't think I'm super exposing him for his alt. But yeah, four matches, four ranked matches between apparently Jack and another top EU player. I don't think AU has played too much in the show match scene just yet. I know that apparently Jack has been all over the show match scene, of course, but AU is still on his way in, and I think he'll be there very soon. I mean, he's been high ra highly rated for so long. Um, maybe he's gotten some games and I haven't even realized it. But I think his time is coming if he wants to grind out these 1v1 games and show what he can do. Now, uh, ranked 1v1 is always a little bit different than show matches. And we were actually talking about this earlier today. It's hard to really say that the way ranked games go at the, uh, like at the top level is how a show match will go or like a tournament will go, which I think are truly the indicators of, you know, who's the better 1v1 player. I guess you could argue um, that ranked is still pretty important. But between the top guys, you know, you'll see even some of the guys like Jory is right now, who I think everyone would include in the top three isn't even in the leaderboard. So, you know, ranked does have some question marks to it. But hopefully we see Ayub soon. Um, we'll see how he does against the best ranked player in the world, apparently Jack. Usually it goes to the leaderboard. Yeah, I mean, he has 100 top 100s. I'm, not sure. I, I, I'm trying to read chat a little bit too late, but... Um, so yeah, into this game, halfway through, we haven't really talked about the gameplay too much. Apparently Jack is up early. We saw him run a few in. He's in the blue, if it wasn't obvious already. Ayub in the orange. I haven't watched a lot of apparently Jack games recently. Uh, I'll be honest. I, I, I do watch a lot of 1v1, but a lot of it ends up being on my own channel. And then I watch some of the big ones, or specifically the ones when guys I will have on my channel a lot go to play on Johnny Boys. Um, and not a lot of them are playing against apparently Jack. So while of course I've seen all the big events of apparently Jack, I haven't seen like a lot of his YouTube videos recently. So I'm excited to be reminded on how he plays. It was interesting when we watched Khaled a couple days ago because I thought I remember him being such a more grounded, like, lethal player, but he was playing full Daniel style. Um, like, full, insane, take it to the air whenever I can type 1v1 play when we watched him in rank against, I think it was Lusual. But Ayub, starting down, working his way back in here, a nice counterattack with two minutes left to go. Bringing it back up. Gonna have to play damage control here on this kickoff attempt and overplayed damage control. Apparently Jack could just stay patient and eventually take his open net.
Apparently Jack not taking this dribble up to the wall. Instead, cutting it midfield. We see at least a lot of the top NA players, every time they get a roll like that, they usually want to force the issue up into the air, play some kind of aerial outplay, and they become so good at it. Apparently Jack's showing everybody that you can also just do a straightforward bounce dribble. If the defender doesn't move, then just take him out of the play. And he's just being really efficient right now. Ayub is playing a little panicky on the back line. Apparently Jack just capitalizing on all his mistakes, cutting the ball and field quickly back to the net as Ayub tries his best to take it away. And here goes apparently Jack. This is the wall to air dribble you love to see. A classic attacking method for every... Oh my goodness, apparently Jack. The double flip reset, but just a little bit too far away from the net. Not a bad flip. Not a bad play. But the farther you try and do it away from the net, the more time you're just giving that defender to adjust. And so starting his double a little bit too far away, and then he's actually going to get exposed here. Playing a little bit too casual on the back wall. Wanting to catch it and maybe carry it away without using a lot of boost. And AU proved that to be the wrong decision by forcing the challenge on him. Apparently Jack playing so safe. That's a really deep fake challenge from AU. So deep he's able to turn it back around and then backflip into the ball. All with apparently Jack not even reacting. He's just trying to be a stone that is completely unaffected by what Ayub is doing. A nice Kali flick. There you go, Kali. I hope Kali ends up seeing this somehow so he can feel vindicated. Not a lot of people do that backflip flick to send it to the moon off the backboard, but it works really well to get that defender to miss. Apparently Jack doing it himself. Of course, we're going to call it the Kali flick to give our boys some credit. Nice low 50, yeah. Apparently setting himself up in the net and trying to pre-jump means he's really going to occupy his car so, so much. Ayub can use that to just force the low 50 in an advantageous situation. Ayub down two, 20 seconds left to go. He needs to force it. Looking for a demo. Not going to find it. I don't think apparently Jack has much boost. Oh, I lied. He's just sitting on 100. It must have spawned underneath him. And he knows he's in control. No need to panic or rush. The clock will tick down, even if Ayub will score this one. It doesn't matter. Apparently, Jack will get the win. So, this first game in ranked, going to apparently Jack against Ayub. The games continue. Game number two. Uh, Yofi, are you planning to let Daniel play the top three players of EU and ME? Yes, I'm, doing, I'm planning on basically exactly that. I'm trying to get him the best possible games. Uh, and you guys will see soon um, what we have planned. What's going on, Batman? We're here in game number two. Ayub versus apparently Jack. Apparently Jack this time in the orange and Ayub in the blue, which I believe is a swap from the way it was the previous game. The number one rated player in the whole entire world versus about the number 10 or 11 or something like that. What do you think would be the best match for Daniel in EU? The best they got. Uh, I think Dan versus apparently Jack is what everyone wants to see. I think... Jack, Jory is, and Khaled are the ones who get credit for being the top three. I think when you ask Johnny, that's what he says as well. He, he does put Daniel at number four. I think it's almost impossible to rate them. I, I think, honestly, I do think that Johnny's rating is probably pretty accurate, right? He's saying that Jack, Jory is, and Khaled have all had the opportunity to prove why they're the best. There's no reason why you should put Daniel above them because Daniel hasn't had an opportunity to prove it in any way. He doesn't have any wins in big tournaments underneath his belt because he hasn't been able to be in any big tournament so it makes sense why he puts those other three guys to the top three i think he, daniel can beat all of them i really think that daniel is potentially the best player in the world he hasn't had a chance to prove it so we're gonna try and give him a chance to prove it hopefully you know it comes not too long he's not gonna become um 15 years old until december so if they do another ones tournament sponsored by Psyonix, which I have to imagine that all the big ones will now be sponsored by Psyonix. They seem to be totally in on helping the 1v1 scene. That means Daniel won't play. And that means we'll basically watch as maybe the best player in the world doesn't get to compete in the event. So that'll be very interesting. TRK swept Khaled. I guess he's the only one to sweep Khaled in the series. Ooh, crazy. Ahmad is pretty cracked. Cracked would be a similar play style. Yeah, I'm trying to get the, the uh, Middle East guys to potentially play as well as, of course, the EU and NA thing everybody knows about from Twitter. Uh, hopefully we can get them all. Hopefully it'll be an exciting, you know, few months or week here soon. 
Daniel barely won versus RDU9, a 13-year-old from KSA. I don't know how he could be better than Jack, for example. Yeah, it's tough. Um, you know, it, it's very possible that he could, you know, lose against other top players. And it could also be possible that he just dropped a couple games against RW9. You know, I don't know um, how apparently Jack's record has been recently. Has he always blown out and swept everybody he's ever played? I doubt it, but I'm, I think it's just fun to find out, um, you know, if, this, if those games end up happening, it'll be really exciting for all of us to see. You're telling me, I'll, wh whatever, I'll believe you. I'll believe you, um, but that's just because apparently Jack hasn't had a chance to play Daniel. Let's say that. I really hope that it doesn't end up going like how some of the NA versus EU 3v3 stuff went, where it's just like whoever had their server won, and it was pretty obvious that the servers were so important that, you know, it was everything. And for the longest time, I thought in 1v1s that servers would almost be more important, but I've, I've kind of maybe turned around on that. And I haven't played them. I, it's ultimately the players who would decide. But 3v3, there's so much car and ball interaction. There's so many players on the field that it makes sense to me that ping almost comes in more often. That's a nice outplay by AU. But in 1v1, there's a lot of situations where you get to be with the ball yourself. You know, like there's not as much interaction with other cars. And there's a chance that maybe because of that, the ping isn't as bad. The kickoffs are so important, though, and the kick the kickoffs, in my experience, are the worst ping situation. And I would say that that would be the reason why I was so terrible, if it weren't for the fact that I've watched a lot of these games, and they don't seem to care about the kickoffs. The kickoffs actually seem to go almost equal, even when somebody's playing on terrible, terrible ping. Uh, in fact, KV1 played recently with like a 40 or 80 ping disadvantage against Lusual, and the reason why he won is his kickoff was so good. So, I mean, I don't know. Of course, these players will be the one to let us know. I don't think I can ever tell you whether or not, you know, they think 3v3 or 1v1 is more exposed by the high uh, ping differential. But I could be convinced that maybe it doesn't matter as much. Apparently, Jack, the irritable bump. This is another close match between these two guys. You think that it'd be less important in 1v1? It's definitely a factor, but plenty of people play with 100 and do fine. Yeah. I mean, we're talking guys are going to have to play with like 180 potentially, you know, 150 to 180. That, that's when we're getting into real questionable territory. I agree that anything under 100 is barely even worth mentioning. Um, because I know of players like Drees and Lion Blaze and these US West California guys who basically always play on 90 ping. Um, so if you're talking about 90, 100, these guys live in 90, 100. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not really an issue. Nice takeaway. Apparently Jack has some good counterattacks. KV1 was one of the best counterattackers I've seen in a long time in his live show match. Uh, his 1-2, like, power shot was so nasty. Apparently Jack working his way out to midfield with low boost, getting out of a tough situation. The demo attempt, not going to work. He used a lot of boost to put himself up on that back wall and he missed that midfield, but he'll be able to reset. AU with 22, not gonna find the angle. Luckily caught the demo. I, I'm not sure he's looking for the demo, but he having to absolute, accidentally flip through it. Nice pinch, wow, what a shot. What a shot from AU. Absolutely ripping a ground pinch perfectly inside the post, because if he didn't put it inside the post, he was not scoring. Apparently Jack had a great recovery off the demo. It covered most of the net. That was actually an insane shot. And a nice play off the back wall. A doomsie by Ayub. 7-6 with 45 seconds left to go. Caleb would not be Joya's just because he has slightly better ping. Wait, is that what Wait, I'm, I'm confused. Plenty of people with 100 plus ping defend fine in 1v1. It's a different game in 3v3. It's easier to predict. Yeah, I think that's probably true. I think the players are ultimately the judges, though, if they tell me otherwise. Apparently, Jack has had a nice air dribble bump. I don't know if we've seen AU go for the air dribble bump as much. Apparently, Jack, um, to be fair, that actually has a lot to do, I think, personally, with the way players defend. Um, if players defend a certain way that is very reliable at saving, like, ground plays or even fairly tough, um, like, aerial shots, it, it usually ends up resulting in them being very deep in the net. And I think that can get really exposed by air dribble bumps a lot. So Ayub may be trying to play what he seems to think as a safer defensive style. So apparently Jack just takes him out of the net. But 7-7, it's looking like this game is going to overtime. 
Um, have you ever had Ashley on stream? No, I think we've only watched Ashley replays. I actually asked Ashley to play today, but he couldn't do it. But he seems to be really interested. Uh, a lot of these guys who I haven't gotten that you guys might want to see, it's not that they, uh, you know, are egoing me at all. They, they, a lot of them seem interested. Nice 50, a good kickoff win. Ayub is going to win this second ranked game against apparently Jack. As of the two of the four we're going to watch have gone 1-1. Game number three. Game number three of AU versus apparently Jack. Hopefully, uh, chat and uh, YouTube have enjoyed our conversation here. We're having a little bit more of a uh, chill vibe talking about Rocket League in general as we watch these replays. But these are really good games. Um, so hopefully, everyone in YouTube who can't necessarily talk to the live stream as we chat about it are cool with everything going on. That being said, we're back into another game. Ayub uh, is still in the blue. Apparently, Jack, I believe, is still in the orange. Uh, Ayub playing with the period name. Has anybody on here been long, or has anybody here been playing Rocket League long enough when the player names used to be sized differently? Am, am I insane for remembering that? I want to say that if you used to have a period as your name, it could actually make your nameplate super small. And that actually became super meta because it would almost hide your nameplate and make you harder to see. So everyone was like shortening your name. I think they very quickly fixed it and made it, you know, at least a default size. But that is how old school I am. TTV IQ mains gameplay. Thank you for all the nices in chat, by the way. People are getting so good at this game. Like you've never seen a Yub until two months ago in ranked, and he was 1400. Now he's 1700 MMR. Yeah, these guys are flying up. I wonder how old a Yub is. Because for me, every time we see somebody uh, fly up in the ranks, they always seem to be honestly under 15, like 13, 14. And we don't see a lot of 12 year olds, but 13, 14 range seems to be like the gr one's grinder range. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they maybe can't play the RLCS. So because they can't play the, uh, the main 3v3 like competition mode, they just grind that ones and they just show that they're so great through that. Maybe I'm making that up. Where is Ayub from? He's playing from Belgium. He said he's from Morocco. Um, but he has moved to Belgium since then. So he plays on EU servers. 13 to 14 year old kids are taking over the leaderboard. I know, man. I'm about to do next gen season three and it's just gonna be the best players. It's like, I'm not gonna have any missing good players. It'll be just all the best players and all of them will be under 15. Like every other ridiculous toddler that's incredible at this game. That being said, the number one rated player in the world, apparently Jack. I don't know his age. If I had to guess, I'm going to guess 18, maybe 19, um, maybe 17. He's 18? No, I was 18. I was right. I was right, chat. I shouldn't have bailed. I just should have said 18 and pretended like I was a genius all along. Um, so 18, a boomer of 1v1, but he is the top player. Jack is in college. Nice, that, that's perfect, dude. College is a good situation. I feel like you could grind a lot of Rocket League when I was in college. I could have I could have both done college, you know, got my engineering degree, which is not a bad degree at least, and feel like I still could have done a lot of Rocket League grinding. Um, I think you could get away with it. Apparently Jack, a fifth, he is running this game up. Had enough of going back and forth with AU. Khaled is 18 as well. Oh, he just graduated high school, so he's in the summertime right now. It's kind of crazy. Isn't the RLCS season kind of like finishing out here now that we're in summer? All these kids finally have absolutely nothing to do but grind the game. And Rocket League's like, and our competitions are over. <laughs> like, this would have been the perfect time for them, right? They'll take the Rocket League grinding of the degree. Yeah, I mean, personally, I have more to gain from apparently Jack playing Rocket League, so... It would be great for me to hear that he's giving up on college and playing only Rocket League. That's, I mean, that's that's great for us, chat. Maybe not the best idea, who knows, for him, uh, you know, for his future, but great for us. Well, it was supposed to be Worlds. Ah, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Booming long shot from apparently Jack. When was Worlds supposed to be? Did they move it up a lot? Was it supposed to be, like, later in the summer, but... Because they're all CS World Championships, it's only like a couple weeks after the playoffs. And I usually they give it more time than that. So people can, I assume, plan because they don't even know if they're going to go to Worlds or not until they win at, I guess, what would have been a major. How long will all esports stick around, do you think? I don't know. Hopefully long enough for um, everybody to 
you know, keep enjoying it. Keep enjoying my stream personally. I love streaming Rocket League. I love doing this for on YouTube. I have a really good time doing it. Um, you know, I'd love to entertain the idea of maybe doing it for a long time. So personally, I think I'm biased. I'm not the guy to ask. Ask somebody who is kind of barely interested. See if they get a vibe. Maybe they can be like, oh yeah, everybody and all my friends have stopped caring about it. You know, I, I don't know. You know, everybody always talks about another air dribble bump. Apparently Jack is just roasting Abe on the air dribble bumps right now. I don't think he's really done much to avoid getting scored on that so much. But, you know, we've always talked about how relatable the uh, the RLCS is for, as far as esports go. And you you see those classic videos on Reddit. If you don't um, follow the Rocket League esports, uh, that's a nice flick. There is some, uh, there's some, re like some videos of some guy's dad like a demographic that obviously Rocket League normally doesn't hit, or definitely esports normally doesn't hit, and he's like super interested in it and like loves watching it, and it's because it's so easy to understand. I, I don't even know if he plays it. I'm gonna guess he probably doesn't play it too much. Oh, a forfeit from Ayub. Game number three going there apparently, Jack, uh, as he blows Ayub out with a minute left to go. Ayub gonna forfeit. Game number four, another game of Ayub versus apparently Jack, as we, you know, wax about Rocket League in general watching some high-level games. Right now, apparently Jack has won two out of the three ranked games. Ayub was able to take one, but the last one was a blowout in apparently Jack's favor. Blows him out. Okay. Okay, chat. Wait, there's another air dribble bump. That means apparently Jack must be playing in the orange. No, he's not! Apparently Jack not playing in the orange. Ayub has had enough. He's had enough of being the only one getting scored on from air dribble bumps. A nice air drill bump of his own to go up early in this game. Lawler was saying how it has the most potential as an esport out of any video game. Yeah, I mean, I agree too, but the thing about the way I handle video games uh, in general is I usually pick one. Nice dodge the air drill bump. That's one of the first times we've seen AU avoid it. He's not going to be able to get the full counterattack. Maybe he will, never mind. The demo. But, anyways, that's what I was saying. The way I handle video games that I've done it for a long time is I'll like pick a video game and then that's the only one I play. And I have no idea what's going on with any other games so it's been rocket league for a long time now so you could tell me it's i don't know what other esports are doing i don't know what's happening with any other game i just know what's happening with this game so to me it's yeah it's the best esport ever of course of course i'm gonna say that but you know i have no idea how true that actually is hey you up to zero, apparently Jack holding on to his 34 boost as he tries to expose AU, but it's not going to work. I cannot pick a guy's camera angle who's actually watching the ball, but AU makes an outplay at midfield. Apparently Jack was really trying to milk that shot attempt. He was not leaving the net no matter what. I think he was trying to drain AU of his boost and hold on to his 34 advantage, but never really was able to do it. And eventually AU got the takeaway. AU off the side wall, trying to pull into an air dribble, but he realized it was going to cost him a lot of boost, and he wasn't going to be able to carry it over apparently Jack. You need a great first touch. You need a great first touch on your air dribbles because you don't want to have to carry the ball with your boost, if that makes any sense. As soon as they realize that the only way I'm getting an effective dribble is using 70 of my boost to get the ball going and get it in the trajectory I want, or you know, basically using up everything I have just to get it started, I'm not going to have enough left to both recover and make my play. So you'll see people pull out of it a lot. It's all about getting a really good first touch and setup so that you can, with very little boost, guide the ball. And you pulling it back down to the ground as soon as he realized that it would be basically a wasted chance and he would just use up everything he had in an attempt to score it over, apparently, Jack. Apparently, Jack, a nice read on the early challenge, but he can't find a way. Yes, he can to get it past. Do you think any esports will become even bigger in the future? Um, what are you talking about win trading? Who, who does win trading? Does uh, Rocket League do win trading? Is that what you're talking about? When you pick a video game, you choose integrity first. One of the nice things about Rocket League... Wow, that was a nice low play. I wonder what that looked like from apparently Jack's perspective. It seems like he just kind of rode on the ground and never made a challenge. 
Does anyone know the highest ranked female ones player? I don't. I think it's probably um, Tallybird, though, if I had to guess. I know Karma could probably be highly rated if she wanted to be. And I don't know anybody else, to be honest. One of the fun things I think about Rocket League is how everybody's just like an Octane car. Everybody's just their name in an Octane car, unless they're a streamer, you know, we're all just gamers. Um, and I don't know a lot of details about a lot of players, unless they become content creators or happen to play on the stream. We're all just... Rocket League cars, you know? Some of my favorite streamers I almost don't like face reveals, because I'm like, dude, I thought of you as that Octane, and now you're a human. Now I gotta think of you as a human instead of that cool Octane you always use. <laughs> hey, Yub. Up 5-2. Trying to bounce back after what was a big blowout of apparently Jack over AU. A great start. He's thrown some of the air dribble bumps. Back at apparently Jack. Great slow play. Hovering behind that ball. Threatening a shot attempt, but taking it back down to the ground and ripping it high. It's weird putting a face to a car you've been seeing for ages. Yeah, and a voice you've been hearing too, for people who don't do face cam and they just do voice. Physical play. Nice flick. Oh, it's a forfeit. Another forfeit. Forfeit two ways. A minute 13 left on the clock. Forfeit from apparently Jack. So the four replays are going to go even 2-2 two -two between these two guys. But high level Rocket League gameplay and a lot of fun e um, RLCS chatting. A little bit of EU chatting. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it. Had a good time watching some high-level gameplay, talking some Rocket League. Give us your comment or give us your uh, opinions in the comments. Tell us what we were so incredibly wrong about. Call out that chatter you saw who just had terrible, terrible takes. And I'll see you guys all next time. See you later.